Um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, my co-authors here, in particular Professor Graham uh, and Jip Balakuma. Um, I'm talking today on gait kinematics since um, slipped up femoral epiphysis. Um, as we all know, uh, Sufi is a common, a common adolescent orthopedic presentation. Um, the well-accepted treatment of this is to pin it in situ. Whilst this minimises the risk of avascular necrosis, they get a residual deformity which leads to abnormal hip motion and gait dysfunction predominantly through a, a CAM-type femoroacetambo impingement. Um, generally, as the slip angle increases, their visible alterations in gait become more obvious and not only do they uh, endure functional problems but they have cosmetic and social implications um, with regards to their gait abnormalities. Um, and we know from FAR type studies that, that the long term impact of this um, impingement is um, degenerative arthritis. So our hypothesis was that the severity of gait disturbance in adolescents post Sufi correlated with the degree of radiological abnormality. Essentially from a research or scientific point of view, um, our aims were to assess the 3D hip kinematics and, kin and, and uh, kinetics um, after screw epiphysiodesis in moderate to severe stable unilateral Sufis. In addition to this, we wanted to look at the hip range of motion parameters um, and also the radiographic abnormalities and try and correlate the gait patterns to the abnormalities in hip and radiographic parameters. From a practical point of view, we wanted to try and predict um, or, or try and gauge clinical and radiographic surrogate measures that we could use at the time of presentation to predict long-term gait dysfunction so that we could accurately postulate a prognosis and natural history of these patients and ensure that those patients who were at high risk of developing problems down the track could have close follow-up and appropriate treatment um, especially with regards to a timely referral to a tertiary paediatric centre. Our methods with regards to inclusion criteria were that the patients must have had a unilateral slip, it was moderate to severe in, uh, and stable in nature as characterised by grade 2 or 3 lateral slip angles beyond 30 degrees. The lesion must have been pinned in situ and the patients could have a contralateral prophylactic pinning but no contralateral slip. Um, excluded were unstable slips, bilateral slips, slip angles less than 30 degrees and patients who developed avascular necrosis or chondrolysis. Essentially we looked at demographic characteristics, so age, gender, etc. We looked at physical examination, so hip range of motion in all planes and we looked at radiographic parameters being the lateral slip angle of Southwick, um, Klein's line offset and the alpha angle of Notley, which I'll introduce subsequently. So we should all be familiar with the lateral slip angle of Southwick. It's essentially a line from the anterior to posterior tips of the epiphyses. You, get a, you draw a perpendicular line to that and the angle is then subtended by a line going up the shaft. Um, normally, it's low, normally it's about 12 degrees, mild less than 30, moderate 30 to 50, severe is greater than 50. Uh, the angle, alpha angle of Notley, which is essentially a radiographic um, measurement of, uh, of impingement and that should be less than 55 degrees. Um, and Klein's line offset, which is a bit of a novel um, radiographic parameter, it's been described in the literature previously, essentially what it, it's a surrogate radiographic marker of the femoral head neck offset and essentially it looks at the distance between a tangential line up the femoral neck and the most lateral part of the equatorial region of the head and gives you a distance of, of essentially that femoral head to neck offset. In addition to that we looked at the 3D kinematics. In particular we looked at parameters known as uh, gait profile score and the movement analysis profile which I'll introduce and explain in a moment. We then looked at kinematic patterns and we then correlated these kinematics with radiology. Essentially, uh, gait would make any uh, orthopedic registrar nervous, especially a final year coming towards exams, but you can essentially break it into these parameters here. So you've got three planes, sagittal, coronal and transverse, and there should be also um, pelvis, hip, knee and ankle down the side here, which essentially give you your, uh, you, you've got 12 different um, uh, components.
This can then be graphed with line graphs here. The red is indicating the left side, the blue indicates the right side, and going from um, stance phase through swing phase here, um, the grey band is the normal. The gait profile score is essentially a single numerical descriptor which was introduced in CP. Essentially what it does is it allows you to, to, dis to, to a descriptive um, denominator of gait with one figure and basically the higher the figure, the more abnormal the gait and it takes into account um, the various components of uh, gait abnormality. It's essentially devised by getting the difference between the two curves and taking the root mean square. So here you've got a normal gait um, analysis line and here you've got uh, abnormal. So you take the area between the curves and take the root mean square of that. That then essentially gives you a single figure. More, sorry, the higher the figure, the more abnormal the gait. The unit is degrees. It's not disease specific. It, was, it can be correlated against a number of pathologies. Um, and normal is roughly five. Um, like your sat nav on your, on your, in your car, the GPS gives you all the uh, coordinates, but you need a map to have a look at the real picture. So the map here essentially gives you a graphical representation of all of the component GPS and at the end um, gives you a total um, of the GPS against um, the right, the left and the overall for all of the gate components. So our results, essentially we had 30 patients, 17 males and 13 females. The average age was just over 13 and a half. They were just under 170 centimetres tall with an average weight just over 75 kilos, giving a BMI of 26.4. Uh, the hip motion was profoundly abnormal. The slip side had an average flexion of around 20 degrees less than, the, less than the sound side. They abducted on average about 13 degrees less and the most marked abnormality is here with internal rotation where they had 30 degree um, deficiency of internal rotation. The radiology, as one would predict, the slip angle was markedly abnormal compared to essentially zero. Um, Klein's line offset was negative in all of these patients indicating they had no head neck offset essentially and the alpha angle was 113 compared to 47 indicating a high uh, propensity to impingement. The gait profile scores, we also had 38 age match controls that had gone through the gait lab which gave us, a, they gave an average GPS of 5.6. The affected side had an average GPS of 10.7, displaying that they had a markedly abnormal gait, almost twice as bad as the normals. The difference 5.5. What was uh, quite interesting was that the, actual, the sound side also had an abnormal gait, with a difference of 1.2 compared to the normals, and this was statistically significant, indicating a potentially detrimental compensatory mechanism on the contralateral side. Unfortunately, and surprisingly, the abnormalities in gait didn't really correlate to the abnormalities in radiology. The closest statistical significance we got was between Klein's line offset and pelvic obliquity, and that was P equals 0.5. The slip angle and alpha angle had no statistical significant correlation. However, there was a trend towards a more severe gait dysfunction with, with more abnormal radiology. Um, does this mean that high grade slips don't more, mean some more severe gait or was this study just underpowered to represent that? Essentially this is the first study in the literature to confirm grossly abnormal 3D gait kinematics in this population utilising the GPS and MAP tools. It's also the first um, study that's been done um, to our knowledge that confirms that both the, both the affected and the unaffected sides um, have abnormal gait parameters suggesting this compensatory mechanism um, but it also indicates that severity of radiological abnormality may not be predictable.